sense or a correct squat kick? As we come together to remember the late civil rights leader, let me ask you, what kind of world do we want to live in? And how do we make this happen? Do we want to live in a world that is characterized by peace, justice, and equity? In order to have a world that is characterized by peace, we must have a world that is characterized by justice. by justice, we must have a world that is characterized by equity. Please with this notion that I welcome you all here today. I welcome Senator Sam our mayor, John Tracy representing Senator Lee, state, federal, and city officials, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my great honor to welcome to Burlington, Mr. Al Sharpton. Today is a special day as he joins us in the celebration. Every year, we honor community members who dedicate their lives to the service of others. I will now invite Mr. Hal Colston, followed by Ken Palm, to read the citation. And Dr. Wanda Hellingbrand will present First of all. Grateful 
that they keep truth and justice at the center of all that they do. Congratulations.
thank all of those who made this award possible. It means a great deal to me, uh, because in my view, Martin Luther King Jr. was the outstanding political and moral voice of my lifetime, and I think one of the great heroes of our entire country. So receive that award it means a great deal to me. Talking about that issue. That's not your 
about jurisdiction. You're inflaming people. You're raising all kinds of issues. How dare you suggest that we shouldn't spend all kinds of money on the military while children in America go hungry or can't afford to go to college? Stop talking about that. And if you read, if you read the history, watch the last few years of his life. He wasn't on the front pages of the papers anymore. He was pushed aside. So how do we honor the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Well, we honor that memory by understanding that this man was a revolutionary. That this man had an extraordinary courage and ultimately lost his life as a result for standing up for a different type of world. So today, when we know that 16% of our people are unemployed or underemployed, let us remember what King would have said. Jobs for all people. When 50 million Americans have no health insurance, what he would have said, health care for all Americans.
majesty in being denied going to a water fountain or being denied a cup of coffee to understand what Dr. King meant. As I grew older and I never left the movement, I did begin to understand what he meant. And I understood it more by what, Sis, what Senator Saunders said. Because when I came 18 years of age, all of my friends went to Vietnam. Because I was a minister, I was given a lower classification. And I lost friends on a war that Martin Luther King gave up funding and support to, to go against. You must remember that Dr. King fought against racial segregation, but he also fought against the political segregation. And the political segregation is that you are only supposed to stay in your spot if you deal with women's rights to stay there. If you deal with black rights, stay there. Don't come out of your spot. And it is really outrageous to think that someone that would bring down the walls of Southern apartheid would also agree to segregate his human rights activity. The reason that is important today is as I grew and developed, I realized that you cannot fight for your rights without fighting for everyone's rights.
that may mean that you're going to lose friends. That may mean you're going to take stands that others don't agree. That may even mean you've got to talk eight hours in the U.S. <laughs>
where do you fit in? Because many of us compromise based on we want the comfort again of maintaining relationships and popularity and access. But none of that will matter two minutes after you leave this earth. There's a reason why 42 years after his death, the world remembers him because he stood for something. And he never compromised himself for whoever held a temporary office or wrote a check that would bounce in the bank of morality.
he has the right to render all of us to the camps that he designates or she designates and that they enjoy so much while the rest of us so little. Those are the ones that now with state deficits, rather than talk about the greed of the corporate elite, want to demonize working class people. And how do they want? How do they want to bring the deficits down, declare war on the union? The problem is the state and federal employees. No, they're not the problem. They didn't get the money. How did they become the problem? Let me get this right. During the years of the tax breaks and the right wing reign, they had a party. We weren't invited to the party. We couldn't go to the party. Now the TAM has come in for the party and you want us to pay for it. <laughs>
if we've got to be big enough to say that even if the specifics don't lead to me, we can't continue in any indirect way to add to the poison and then act as though once we put poison in the system, that if somebody drinks the water somewhere else, it's not our fault. We've all got to do that.
yet figure out our part of making the dream come true. Facing our local Bill Collins and our local New York Times and say, no matter what, I'm going to stand for something. So when it's over, they can say I won. Not because I outran somebody, but because I stood for something. And right will overpower might. King was right. The arch of the universe is long, but it bends toward truth. And they may ridicule men like Bernie Sanders, and they may ridicule those of us that seem out of step. But one day, when this country has closed the wealth gap, and we don't have zillionaires and welfare recipients, and when we have health care for everyone, and where every child can go to school, one day we may be laying in our graves. We can smile and know like Dr. King we won because we were not afraid to fight. Thank you.
by Reverend Al Sharpton. And in his absence, let's give him a round of applause.